What's up guys, it's Covert Code here and welcome back to episode 17 of our Zero to Hero series. In the last video we covered how you can use local functions and local variables in your scripts and in today's video we're going to be learning about C-frames. Oh, C-frames are pretty much just, you know, you know how you, the position of a part is based on three values, three coordinates. So, so if I just click this and scroll down to find the position, okay, I'm going to move this around in the Z direction, okay? As you guys can see, it's changing the Z value. Now, if I click on this and, you know, go to the position again, and I move around this green arrow here, it's going to go up and down on the Y axis, okay? And the red arrows are pretty much the X axis, okay? Now, C-frames are essentially the same thing, you know, and you might be wondering, how are they different? Why aren't they the same thing? That's because C-frames are pretty much, you know, the position information of a part, okay? So that's the position right here, and the rotation information of a part. So, you know, like this. This is the orientation or the rotation, whatever you guys want to call it, of a part, okay? So the C-frame value will essentially store the position, so it's four, actually that's the size. Um, so it'll uh, store this, so that's the position. So let me show you guys how to actually use this. So go to script and, uh, you know, delete everything we did last time. And let's just define a local variable, okay? And store the, uh, let me just delete this, store this part inside of a variable, okay? So local part is equal to workspace.part, okay? Now, if I want to change this part C frame, all I have to do is part.c frame, okay, like that. Make sure it's written exactly this way. F has to be capital and C also has to be capital, okay? And just define that, you know, same thing as any other property, guys. Um, so, the only different thing is, instead of doing something like vector3.new or, you know, udem2.new or something like that, um, you have to use uh, cframe.new. So you're essentially telling the script that you want to create a new cframe value. So I want to position this part, okay, at let's say 0, 40, 0. Okay. And these are essentially the position values. So if I just copy this and clear the output and paste it in the command bar, okay, it set the part cframe. 0, 40, 0. So if I just scroll down, as you guys can see, the position is 0, 40, 0. However, it did not change the orientation. What I mean by that is, uh, let me just rephrase that. If I had an orientation, so if I had, uh, let's say, um, 50 on the z-axis for orientation, and I run this script again, is going to ignore that part's orientation, okay? Because, remember guys, when you're setting a C-frame, and you're only giving it the position value, okay, so this, um, essentially you're telling it to ignore the previous orientation or the rotation, whatever you guys want to call it, okay? So if I want this to preserve the orientation it had before, um, you would have to specify that on that same line. I'll get to how you can do that in just a second, but let me show you how to add two C-frames, okay? So, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but you can actually add two vector trees like this, okay? Plus vector three dot new. Uh, so, if I had 0, 20, 0, and 0, 30, 0, okay? This would give us vector three dot new, 0, 50, 0, okay? However, if you try to add C-frames like this, that won't work, okay? You need to use multiplication symbol, which is the asterisk, okay? And I know it's kind of weird, but that's how C-frames are added. So this would position this at uh, cframe.new 060, okay? So let me show you guys. Copy, uh, clear the output, paste. And as you guys can see, if I click on this and view its position, it's at 060. That's just how you add, uh, you know, new, C frames to an existing C frame essentially. You're just adding two C frames, okay? So let me show you guys how to actually preserve or add orientation. So let me just 
delete this part okay so if i want to rotate the part so if i want to introduce that rotational aspect that we talked about that c-frames have we would just use the multiplication symbol again so you're adding a c-frame however instead of saying c-frame dot new you're going to say c-frame dot angles okay and there is a ton of c-frame dot whatever functions okay i'll just leave a link to the uh page on the roblox wiki about c frames and you can just go check that out if you don't know how to understand or read the wiki i also have a tutorial on that link will also be in the description below okay so c frame not angles let's talk about this okay so c frame not angles open up the parentheses and the first thing you see is that it says r in front of the x and r in front of the y and r in front of the z okay that's because it's expecting you to enter a radian value so you can't rotate this by uh 90 degrees okay remember we covered the uh, mat uh let me just remove this remember we covered the mat.rad function in the math class video this essentially converts degrees to radians okay and if you don't know what this does or haven't seen this before go check out the math class video link will also be in the description below okay so we just need to use this to convert uh the degrees that we want to rotate by into radians okay so if i want to rotate this by let's say 90 degrees in the y-axis okay so you'd say zero because you don't want to rotate it by anything on the x-axis uh, mat dot radians okay for the y-axis and let's put in 90 because that's how many degrees i want to rotate by and it also enters zero for the z-axis if i click play okay actually let's, let's not click play let's just paste in the command bar it's way faster so paste and as you guys can see now obviously we changed let me let me just show you guys what this does let me remove the asterisks okay so we're removing the uh, angles part so this is the normal uh sort of frame dot new 040 okay without the positional aspect now if i add times c frame dot angles and what we did so mat dot rad 90 okay and press enter like that it's going to rotate this by 90 degrees i want to rotate this by uh, 115 degrees it'll rotate it by 115 degrees uh, if i want to for example also rotate on the z-axis I would just add mat.radians, okay, and rotate that by 45 degrees on the z-axis. And as you guys can see, it rotated it by 115 degrees on the y-axis, and it also rotated it by 45 degrees on the z-axis, okay? And this is probably slightly confusing to you guys, okay? And that's okay. Remember when I introduced uh, position property, you had to use vector3.new and you were confused? This is the same thing. So don't get discouraged okay so essentially instead of plus you have the multiplication symbol and you know if you want to rotate then you use cframe.angles now you might be wondering why should i use cframe instead of position you know position is so much easier to understand and whatever blah 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 okay that's because you can actually do the exact same thing with models okay now you can't really do the same thing uh you know with positions and by the way, the compatibility with models is not the only advantage to C-frames. I would always pretty much use C-frames over position because it's just more concise in my opinion and more efficient. But uh, let's grab this uh, free model from the toolbox and insert a dynamic light pole, okay? Now, just be careful. If you want to rotate a model, it has to have a primary part, okay? So just make sure that exists. Now, I want to rotate this. Let me just call this light pole like this for easier uh, understanding purposes and remove the entire contents of the script and let's say local light pole is equal to workspace.lightpole okay now if i want to get the c frame all i have to do is local light pole c frame is equal to light pole get primary part c frame and that's going to give you the c frame of the primary part which is this okay if you want to modify the primary C frame of that, so you would just do light pole set primary part C frame instead of get primary part C frame, okay? So get primary part C frame, let's say C frame dot new, and this is essentially the same thing, guys, as we were doing before 0, 40, 0 times C frame dot angles, for example, uh, mat dot radians 
45, 0, 0, okay? So essentially, we just gave it some new C-frame. Let me just copy this and clear the output, paste inside of the command bar, and press enter. Now, oh my bad, I forgot uh, some parentheses apparently. Yes, I did. Uh, there's meant to be two parentheses there. Uh, so copy, clear, paste. And as you guys can see, it rotated the entire model, okay? To where I want it to be. So apparently this is the primary part because that's the base part, okay? As you guys can see, same name, base part. Um, and it rotated the base part with the entire model, okay? To that specific position and orientation. Now, if you're still unsure about how to use C-frames, I would strongly suggest visiting the wiki page, which is linked in the description below. It's practicing around with different sort of position values and orientation values and so on, because that's really the only way you're going to get better and more familiar with C-frames. Hey guys, that's all I have for this tutorial on C-frames. I would really appreciate if you leave a like and, you know, if you can, subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future videos I should make, leave a comment in the comment section down below suggesting what I should make next. And I'll see you guys next time.